I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and it's time to leave no dye behind. Or at least it's time to make a little bit of progress on some of this dye that we have left behind and that we have left over. I have a lot of colors, um, some black, some pink. I think it's a pink. Uh, this might be a little bit more black, just powder with no citric acid. Maybe a pink and like a yellow and orange or a tangelo or something. These are left over from various projects and I wanna use up as much of it as I think is reasonable. I also have some yarn that I pre-soaked for another video and ended up not using. Right here I have 200 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Yarn. This is a non-superwash yarn that is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And it's not necessarily the best yarn to do with speckles, even though uh, I think I do have a video that's on the docket that I haven't edited yet where I tried to speckle on non-superwash yarn. And that is where I think this black and pink dye came from. But the goal today isn't to try to get speckles on this yarn. The goal is to use up some of these leftovers so I can have some of these containers back. Uh, and create, hopefully, some fun yarn in the process. I pre-soaked this yarn in plain tap water, so there's no acid in here yet. We will be adding citric acid, though, from some of these other colors that we have mixed. Uh, and eventually, if we need to, we'll add some vinegar. But I think that we're gonna do a combination of like applying the powders on and then also dissolving some of these powders in liquid to, again, just try to use things up as best we can. But since we are gonna be working with dry dye powders, I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, so that way I can protect my eyes and my lungs. Just off camera, I have a cup with some hot tap water that we can use to help with everything. So I'm gonna start, oh dear, am I gonna be able to do this with the glove? Oh good. Um, I'm going to start by pouring some of this liquid into this container, which appears to be pink. Oh, I wonder if I poured this out to speckle with my fingertips. I wonder if that's what I had done, if it was the same pink, and I just never poured it back in. Oh, well, so much for trying to treat these two the same. Good thing I think I have some more pink elsewhere, but we can also pour onto this lid. There we go. Next up, we have this little bit of black powder that I'm not really sure what it's left over from. Oh, it's not black. Oh, this could be Caribbean blue. This could be left over from the spring mini skein mini series uh, doing the yarn mops. Ooh. Um, you can see I'm totally just randomly placing it. This one has no acid in it, but we are adding more water, but that was a surprise. That was a surprise. Oh, that's so funny. I can't believe I had no idea what it was. Oh my goodness. I'm having fun. All right, I'm gonna get some more warm water. Shoot, it wasn't recording. And I don't know for how long. Um, but I had this, I think it's maybe honey mustard or something. It was a golden yellow. It was a powder, I just kind of sprinkled it all over. And then there were some clumps left and I poured water in here, shook it up, and then poured, started pouring this on. Uh, down there. And what I was saying was, I don't know if adding, I guess it was maybe up to like here with the citric acid mister. I don't know if this will be enough acid uh, to set all the color in the end, but we'll find out. But shoot. Let me go see, check the footage. Okay, good. I guess I had showed the honey mustard before I started sprinkling with it. But goodness. <laughs> I hate when I think it's recording, and I am not. All right, here, this is sort of how I was trying to break it up. This, I think, is maybe tangelo, 
or it could be a different orange. I don't know. But why don't we flip the yarn over? And again, we'll be adding a lot more like liquid and everything as we go. You can see the color streaking out. I'm not worried about like the placement or anything. I'm just curious to see where this will go. I really wasn't expecting that blue. But this is why if you're going to save things for a while, I either then end up using the same colors over and over in different videos because I'm trying to use it up. Or what can happen uh, is sometimes I'll label it, but then sometimes you forget. Yes. So this is Tangelo, which is a pinky kind of orange. And I'm liking it, but I don't think I want to use too much more of it. I believe this is Tangelo. So I'm going to put the lid back on this one. And we're going to go for some more pink. Because the other speckles with citric acid I used in the June Chemnitz dye along. So I know for a fact uh, that it is black. And this I am fairly certain is pink. I maybe did use this in the attempting to speckle uh, on non-superwash yarn. And again, I'm not anticipating that we will end up with speckles here, but we are just trying to use up a lot of these dyes that we have. Now, it looks like there's a lot of dye, but the thing is, I'm gonna add some water in here. The thing is with this is that when I add dye to citric acid, there tends to be so much more citric acid then dye. So I'm hoping that that won't be a huge issue. But now, ooh, funny, because the colors are going to strike so slowly. Ooh. All right, let's go get a lot more water. And again, this is just some more warm tap water. And as I add this, this is going to spread a lot of these colors out a bit and I don't mind if we end up with some white left in here but I did want to bring in enough water so we could at least try to get some colors on here so now I think let's take this over to the stove I just turned on the heat and as things are starting to warm up I want to press a little bit. This may blend things some and the blue may spread all over. But you know, we will see how it goes. And you know, I may not mind the mix of colors, but I do kind of want some of this blue to go on the other skein. Seems like there's a lot more over there, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it yet. If this feels like part of it is muddy and part of it is too bright and it doesn't really work, then I can start bringing in some more of that black and sort of tone what down what's going on up there a little bit. But I feel like we've added a lot of citric acid, so let's wait 20 minutes and see what happens. I don't think it's been quite 20 minutes yet, and there is definitely still some blue. I feel like a lot of that color may have cleared, but I have an idea. Uh, and some of you may get mad and be like, Rebecca, don't touch, don't touch. But I'm gonna add a lot of water. So that's eight cups of water. Um, and now I'm going to gently stir Actually, that really wasn't very much blue left, huh? <laughs> I was like, let's spread. Oh, maybe the blue is all like on that one. I was like, let's spread out some of that blue onto the other side. But turns out it really wasn't very much blue. <laughs> I mean, this side seems to be leaking some blue. But... 
yeah, I don't know. Maybe it just toned it down like a hair and brought it on the same level. I mean, I still liked it even before I did that. But I was like, ooh, what if I just let the blue like spread? I'm kind of digging it. So a lot of the colors have struck just with that citric acid that we've added. But I do think, given that this is Caribbean blue and I'm seeing some color come out, I'm gonna just pour some vinegar down there just so that way we have some more acid to help things. Especially because I added more water, which uh, did dilute the acid that we had in here already. But anyway, I'll now come back in 20 minutes and we'll see how things are going. It's been 20 minutes and let's peek. That's looking pretty good. Pretty good. All right, I am going to uh, turn off the heat and leave the yarn in here to cool completely. There was no dye left in the dye bath and I did leave the yarn in there until it was completely cool. And okay, we'll see what happens when we add some soap. Caribbean Blue is a notorious bleeder and I am, yeah, I'm 100% sure that's what the blue was because in the containers I used for the end of the spring mini skein mini series, I swapped to Caribbean Blue at last minute and it was so potent that I used more of it than, or less of it than every other color. So I'm seeing like the tiniest hint, maybe, maybe of something, um, but not bad. This kind of color combination always feels very bird-like to me. Like I feel like parrots. But anyway, I'm gonna fill this up. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're good. We are really good. So I'm now going to take our yarn, put it through my spin dryer, and hang it up to dry. There are, I guess, peaks and valleys when you consider using uh, surprise dye powders for a project. I mean, I still can't believe I didn't realize that blue was blue and not black. I guess. There have been times that I'd use black speckles and I couldn't remember if I was doing some without citric acid. So I thought that there was a good chance it was a black, plus the powder itself was really dry. Now, one of the fun things of it is that otherwise I wouldn't have made this colorway, I would have done something else and I like this colorway. So that's totally a peak. The valley was that if I thought it was black, so I thought I was going in a different direction, then I may be disappointed. But here's a little tip. If you ever have a powder that you saved and you don't remember what the hue is, you can take a damp paper towel and put a little bit of the powder on that before you bring it to the yarn, and then you can get a sense of the hue so you don't have a surprise like this. Normally, when I'm dealing with dry dye powders, I do try to use up all of it that I've taken out for a project pretty quickly because for just this reason, I don't want to have mystery colors around. But sometimes, especially when I mix the dyes with citric acid, the colors go so much further than what I was anticipating that there's just way too much dye to use up in that day. Our two skeins today are similar, but not identical. And so if you are gonna use both of these in one project, when you're about to transition from one to the other, it could be worth uh, alternating skeins every couple of rows or rounds just to blend them together a bit. Or if you don't want there to be any potential asymmetry, you could do that along the way for the entire project to blend them together a little bit more. Um, but this is honestly something that I recommend with a lot of hand dyed yarn anyway. Not that it's a problem a lot, but sometimes you do see differences between skeins, even ones dyed in the same exact pan. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe, ring that bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And please let me know down in the comments below if you have any suggestions for techniques I should do with leftover dyes. I feel that these leave no dye behind videos often are very freeing for me because since one of the goals is to use up some miscellaneous dye that I have, I try to find ways to, I guess, make it work. And the whole experience is very free flowing and I really enjoy it. But if you have any suggestions or requests, I do keep track of those. So yeah, just leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching.